Let's begin with a question. Are humans just one among a billion species that evolved over eons on one small rocky planet, among trillions of planets circling hundreds of billions of stars in a galaxy, that is just one among hundreds of billions of galaxies that, for all we know, contain billions of unimaginable life forms, all located in an expanding cosmic bubble that may be one among an enormous number of universes. Is it possible that all of this is the result of one species of conscious creatures we know intimately as Homo sapiens? Which leads me to British physicist Sir Roger Penrose, who observed that the human brain and consciousness is even more complex than the Milky Way galaxy that has incubated our evolution. If you look at the entire physical cosmos, says Penrose, our brains are a tiny, tiny part of it, but they are the most perfectly organized part. Ed Witten, a theoretical physicist at Princeton University, who is often compared to Isaac Newton and Einstein, says about the three and a half pound universe we carry around in our head, I have a much easier time, he says, imagining how we understand the Big Bang than I have imagining how we can understand consciousness. The universe and the observer exist as a pair. I cannot imagine a consistent theory of the universe that ignores consciousness, says Stanford physicist Andre Lin, about the great question, perhaps the central unsolved mystery of the 21st century, concluding that consciousness may exist by itself, even in the absence of matter, just like gravitational waves, ripples in space-time, that may exist in the absence of protons and electrons. Negle neglecting consciousness, says Lind, will lead to a theory of the universe that is fundamentally incomplete. What if our perceptions are as real, or perhaps maybe even more real than material objects? After the development of a unified geometrical description of the weak, strong, electromagnetic and gravitational interactions, the next important step will be the development of a unified approach to our entire world, including the world of consciousness. Accepted materialistic doctrine, consciousness, like space-time before the invention of general relativity, plays a secondary subservient role. For what purpose did the human brain evolve? It's a question that has puzzled scientists for decades and was answered in 2010 by Colin Blackmore, an Oxford University neurobiologist, who argued that a mutation in the brain of a single human being some 200,000 years ago turned intellectually able primates into a superintelligent species that would conquer the world. Homo sapiens appears to be a genetic accident. Or are we? We are the only species of the billions of species that have existed on Earth that has shown an aptitude for radios. And even we failed to build one during the first 99% of our 7 million year evolution. Without consciousness, the universe would vanish in a puff of smoke, like a dream, leaving nothing behind and no one to know that it ever existed. Even to say that the universe is conscious does not go far enough. The universe is consciousness itself, says Deepak Chopra and physicist Menas Kafatos in their recent book, You Are the Universe. You Are the Universe offers a scientific argument for what they call the participatory universe, the proposition that the universe and human consciousness are inextricably linked. We allow the universe to be aware of itself in the dimension of time and space. Let me repeat that. We allow the universe to be aware of itself in a dimension of time and space. The cosmos is thinking through you, says Chopra and Kafatos. Whatever you happen to be doing is a cosmic activity. Take away any stage in the evolution of the universe, and this very moment that we exist in vanishes into thin air. Quantum physics makes it undeniable that we live in a participatory, participatory universe. Are life and mind irrelevant to the structure of the universe, or are they central to it? This is the great question that intrigued the Princeton quantum physicist John Archibald Wheeler. In the last decades of his life, Wheeler originated the notion of a participatory conscious universe, a cosmos in which all of us are embedded as co-creators, replacing the accepted universe as out there and separate from us. Wheeler introduced the concept of wormholes and coined the term black hole and devised the concept of quantum foam, a theory of virtual particles that pop in and out of existence in space. He conceptualized foam as the foundation of the fabric, the very fabric of the universe. Wheeler suggested that the nature of reality was revealed by the weird laws of quantum mechanics. According to quantum theory, before an observation is made, a subatomic particle exists in several states, called a superposition. 
Wheeler called it a smoky dragon. Once the particle is observed, it instantaneously collapses into a single position. Wheeler suggested that reality is created by observers and that no phenomenon is a real phenomenon until it is an observed phenomenon. He coined the term, term participatory anthropic principle from the Greek word for human, anthropos. He went further to suggest that we are participants in bringing into being not only the near and here, but the far away and the long ago. At the end of his life, Wheeler said cryptically that when we finally comprehend the true nature of the cosmos, we will be stunned by its simplicity. Sir John Eccles, a famous British neurologist and Nobel Prize laureate, declared, I want you to realize that there exists no color in the natural world and no sound, nothing of this kind, no textures, no patterns, no beauty, no scent. What Eccles, Eccles means, says Scafados, is that all the qualities of nature, from the, from the luxurious scent of a rose to the sting of a wasp and the taste of honey, are produced by human beings. Wheeler was a major influence on Chopra and Cofados, inspiring them to explore some of the most important and baffling questions about human existence. What happens when modern science reaches a crucial turning point that challenges everything we know about reality? In the coming era, they suggest, the universe will be completely redefined as a human universe, radically unlike the cold, empty void where human life on our planet are mere, a mere moat of random dust. The universe is not a place where consciousness somehow got cobbled together on lucky planet Earth, two-thirds of the way out from the center of a galaxy called the Milky Way, but as a place where consciousness is everywhere. There are many fence-sitters in physics today who will concede that nature acts in mind-like ways, but they cannot swallow the proposition that the universe behaves exactly like a mind. Or, as my favorite physicist Freeman Dyson once said, God is mind beyond our current comprehension. That's why in scattered pockets, some physicists are beginning to talk about a conscious universe where consciousness is a given throughout nature. Val Landy signing off. Please subscribe today and support the Galaxy Report at patreon.com. Thank you, thank you, thank you.